Welcome to Mobile Medical Media's video review of ultrasound examination of the carpal tunnel. This module reviews how to use ultrasound to identify carpal tunnel syndrome during evaluation of the volar surface of the wrist. A 35-year-old woman with a history of non-insulin dependent diabetes presents to your office with a complaint of tingling and burning pain over the first three digits of her right hand. Her symptoms are often worse at night or when holding a telephone with the affected hand for long periods of time. You decide to use ultrasound to evaluate for possible carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a common entrapment neuropathy that is caused by compression of the median nerve at the level of the wrist. Prompt diagnosis of this syndrome is essential to preventing associated muscle atrophy and functional disability. Ultrasound is a safe and rapid modality for identifying compression of the median nerve. The patient should be in the seated or supine position with the affected hand resting in supination. Using a high frequency linear ultrasound transducer, begin the evaluation by placing the probe in the transverse plane over the volar surface of the wrist. The carpal tunnel will be found just distal to the wrist crease and extends from the level of the pisiform to the trapezium. In this view, the normal median nerve can be recognized as a round or oval structure with the typical honeycomb appearance that results from the mix of hypoechoic nerve fascicles and hyperechoic connective tissue. The surrounding tendons appear relatively hyperechoic and more homogeneous than the median nerve. Note the flexor carpi radialis tendon radial to the median nerve at the left side of the image. The median nerve can be differentiated from the adjacent flexor tendons by angling the transducer along the long axis of the tendons. This maneuver will cause the tendons to appear relatively hypoechoic due to anisotropy. In addition, by moving the transducer proximally, the median nerve will move between the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus muscles. At the level of the carpal tunnel, the transverse carpal ligament, or flexor retinaculum, appears as a thin hyperechoic band superficial to the median nerve. A small percentage of the population will be found to have a bifid median nerve at this level. After identifying the median nerve at the wrist crease, freeze the image. Using circumferential trace mode, the cross-sectional area of the median nerve at the proximal carpal tunnel should be measured. Normally, the median nerve should be uniform in caliber and measure less than 10 millimeters square. Turn the transducer 90 degrees to obtain a longitudinal image of the median nerve. The median nerve is differentiated from the deeper flexor tendons by visualizing the hypoechoic fascicles that are characteristic of a peripheral nerve. Note the bone contours of the radius, lunate, and capitate for orientation. The normal median nerve has a uniform caliber as it courses through the carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome may be recognized by hypoechoic swelling of the median nerve at the proximal portion of the carpal tunnel due to intraneural edema or fibrosis. The fascicular pattern that is typical of peripheral nerves may be partially lost as the normally hyperechoic connective tissue components that surround the nerve fascicles become hypoechoic. While a cross-sectional area greater than or equal to 10 mm square suggests carpal tunnel syndrome, any enlargement of the median nerve at the carpal tunnel compared to more proximally in the correct clinical setting also suggests nerve compression. Physiologic transverse sliding of the median nerve with movement of the index finger may decrease with carpal tunnel syndrome. In the longitudinal plane or long axis view, the median nerve will again appear swollen and hypoechoic. The median nerve may show an abrupt caliber change as it enters the proximal tunnel, a finding known as the notch sign. Doppler imaging may also be helpful during evaluation of the carpal tunnel. Intraneural hyperemia may be associated with nerve swelling. You perform an ultrasound evaluation of the volar surface of your patient's right wrist. Transverse imaging of the median nerve at the proximal carpal tunnel reveals a hypoechoic and enlarged median nerve with a cross-sectional area of approximately 20 mm square. You prescribe anti-inflammatory medication and a wrist splint during sleep to treat her for carpal tunnel syndrome. Ultrasound-guided corticosteroid injection may also be considered.
A small proportion of carpal tunnel syndrome is due to compression of the median nerve by a ganglion cyst or other mass. Early carpal tunnel syndrome may not demonstrate any abnormal ultrasound findings. A normal ultrasound evaluation cannot exclude the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome.